So this question is about anti-aliasing. So we're given a message signal of 10 kilohertz. That doesn't mean it's a single component. It means it has a bandwidth of 10 kilohertz. So I've sketched a signal here that has a spectrum with a bandwidth of 10 kilohertz. It doesn't matter what the shape is, but we're talking about anti-aliasing because the sampler is unable to sample at the Nyquist rate. So the Nyquist rate is 2 times 10 kilohertz, so that's 20 kilohertz. The sampler can only sample at 14 kilohertz. So that means we have a situation where we have distortion, we have aliasing, we have spectral overlap. So to combat that, we will have a low-pass filter. So that low-pass filter can either come before the sampler or after the sampler. So this low-pass filter can either be after the sampler or before the sampler. And the question is, how much of the original bandwidth will be retained? How much can we keep if we were to sample before as opposed to after the sampling process? So if we were, if there was no low pass filter, just think for a second, if, if this didn't exist, if we didn't have a low pass filter, if all we would do, all we were doing was sampling at 14 kilohertz, so 14 kilohertz is this frequency here. So if this is my sampling frequency, if there was no filter, then we would have a replica of width 10 kilohertz centered at 14 kilohertz. So it would look something like that. It would extend from 14 minus 10 to 14 plus 10. And we'd have this area here of spectral overlap. So all of this would be distorted. So at the receiver, everything from 4 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz, so basically this 6 kilohertz would be lost. So to combat that, we could apply a low-pass filter, a so-called pre-filter, an anti-aliasing filter before the sampling process. And we could, we could do that in such a way that the cutoff frequency for the filter would be that point there. So if we were to set the cutoff frequency of the filter at 7 kilohertz, that is half the 14, then, so if this was my low-pass filter, then we would effectively be able to salvage the frequency range between 4 and 7 kilohertz. So we would still have the frequency range from 0 to 4, but we would additionally have the frequency range from 4 to 7. So what we would keep would be the 7 kilohertz. We would lose 3 kilohertz. So the total is 10 kilohertz. So what we would now have would be critical sampling. So you'd have that as your first spectrum, and then the replica would look something like this, and it would extend to 7, so it would be 14 minus 7 is 7, and 14 plus 7 is 21, so the spectrum would look something like that, and then it would continue again. So there would be no aliasing, no spectral overlap, 
but we would effectively lose this much of the spectrum. Now, if the low pass filter was moved to after the sampling process, then that wouldn't be possible. If we were to sample, if we were to apply the low pass filter after sampling, then we would have to apply a filter, a much more aggressive filter. We would have to apply a filter at four kilohertz, because only then could we remove all of this corrupted spectrum. So the spectrum between four and 10 would be my corrupted spectrum that we'll be throwing away, and we'd only be able to retain four kilohertz. So we'd be losing six kilohertz. So, given these two scenarios, which one would be more effective, which one would um, make more sense? Assuming we had the choice, obviously, we would want to pre-filter. Now, we don't always have the choice, but if we had the choice, we should be sampling before, we should be uh, filtering before the sampling rather than after. So that there is your final answer.